welcome to Movie Mayhem here at Superior Works Cinema where we watch all the movies. Today we have Kung Fu Bin here and we're going to be looking at Not Kung Fu Movie. Zzz. This is a uh, part of the John Woo series which is why part three is not in here because uh, Wu held firm on his ground and did not agree to do the third part. Um, which after watching the second one I think Probably that a was decision. a good, good choice. Good decision. Um, if you've seen the third one, Hark did it on his own. That is probably one of Hark's worst movies. You haven't seen it yet. No, I haven't actually seen that one. It's kind of eh, at best. So, this is kind of the beginning of what most people know as, as John Woo's career. I mean, he'd been directing movies decade plus prior to this. Um, some uh, uh, decently known kung fu movies and then some lesser known in the uh, western audience comedies which he did which, which are actually pretty good but they weren't very well known uh better tomorrow one of course the breakout film for shao yun fat as well as john woo and the kind of the creation of this one yeah the creation <laughs> of the whole uh, uh hong kong action gun fu cinema thing that that you know, it was really in the underground when it came out, of course, on the western side. And then once Tarantino broke out <laughs> and uh, Hong Kong went back, it kind of migrated over here and we got a lot of that. So, right. um, kind of the inspiration for films like, you know, Matrix and Equilibrium and a bunch of those kind of things. Very, very really much well so. Did those. So, I mean, when you, when you watch, watching this now, I mean, both movies even, watching the action still holds up. It, it's not like when I go back and watch, um, you know, an old Schwarzenegger movie. The action's right. kind of, eh. I mean, once you get to that middle era, like past 85, you know, Commando right. and stuff, that was still pretty good. But <clears> then it kind of got that softer, more tame look. Yeah, and it's kind of cheesy. So, like a yeah, lot of Yeah, yeah, very much yeah. pokey. And, and this is, so in, in the first one, it's, a very serious drama, yeah. And you get a nice relationship between all the characters, the the family relationship, the interpersonal relationship, and the consequences of their actions. Yeah, a great moral of the story. There's a good, you know, followable, you know, parable to the whole thing, where you know a very like Aesop fable type story being told, which is you know excellent. It makes for a really good drama, a really good story. And that was something sorely missing. If you look back, you know, in the mid '80s. How many Western action movies had that? Not action movies. I mean, right. there were movies, but not sure, action sure. movies. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, you, you had guys like Scorsese making those, right. but this was kind of a such a unique blend, and you could watch this hyper violent action film, but right. at the same point, it was a good movie. It wasn't right. just explosions and, and, and gun Yeah, fire. I mean, he was, John Woo was famous for, you know, kind of being one of the first people that say that you, that just because it's an action movie doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't have to have a story, that it can still tell a good story while having good action. Right, right. And, so, and turning up the, the level of violence. Yes. It, it's it's yes. very it's extreme. Very, yeah, challenging the, especially for the time, challenging kind of the medium of, you know, everything that was going on. And it was, it was extremely gruesome. I mean, there's a lot of bloody stuff in it, so... Brilliant blood. Yeah, I mean, in a lot of the the uh, not reloading thing and the overshooting people kind of right. adds to the intensity of the scene. Yes, and, and it you know it, it surprised <clears throat> me. I haven't actually watched either of these in, in at least uh, ten years. So I don't know. This is the first time you'd seen this one in Chinese, right? Correct. Yeah. Yes. And you had never seen the second one. Yes. So you know, watching them again, it was I was surprised at how fresh they felt. It didn't feel dated when I watched it. I mean, you know, aside from the gigantic cell phone. And the <laughs> trench coats everywhere. Just <laughs> trench coats as far as I can see. And the smoking. The, there was a lot of smoking. Yeah, yeah, Chai and Fat smokes a lot <laughs> in that movie. Like, more than is healthy for anybody. Even acting, you gotta imagine, if he's actually sucking down five cigarettes in a shot, yeah, how many takes did he do? Yeah, right. You know, like, I mean, he must have gone through a pack in like an hour. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, you know, this is also, I mean, it was a big movie. Leslie Chung, I think he was already kind of known for his singing before he did this. Um, you know, but it was, was kind of, and he went on to do a lot of movies as an, you know, as an actual actor, you know. So that was kind of good for him as well. Um, of course, you have Soy Hark involved. Uh, Ching Siu Tong did the uh, action choreography, who also did the... Uh, um, Chinese Ghost Story and a lot of other stuff, and directed Belly of the Beast with Steven Seagal. That was his Western. 
It's really huh. sad. He did not get a good western. I was movie say that's attempt. not a good. That's no, not a good movie. no. I mean, at least like you know, Wu got Hard Target. Ringo Lamb got at least uh, the first maximum maximum risk. Yeah, that was it. You know, at least come on, this poor him. No, he didn't get a very good. Yes, a golf. And not even good to it. Was Maxim Risk? Yeah, it might have been hard. But anyway, the point is, a lot of people are involved in these movies. And, you know, this was a huge hit in Hong Kong. I mean, obviously, <laughs> it coming out over here. They, uh, these are the Blu rays. Um, these are the Fortune Stars, which are. They're called upscales. Um, one thing I noticed is, yeah, they're probably not the best. I mean, they're not. High res, but the Blu-rays do not have any of the uh, uh, crushing or artifacting I noticed on the older DVDs. So they're still better than that. And until someone finds a nice film print and gives something better, we're not going to find anything if that. Because right. for whatever reason, you know, the, China itself kind of forgets about the past films, and they're still a pretty small market even in the states because these never really did much besides get thrown on Netflix with bad dubs. Right. Which is good, at least some people can see him that way, but the dubbing's kind of corny. Um, and, and uh, you know, like, The Killer and Hard Boiled both got pretty good releases in the States. Oh, yeah, you can find those at Blockbuster. You can find those anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, at the time, so those those got a lot more attention, and this is the, the predecessor to that. So, um, this one was a, a excellent film all around. Oh, yeah. I, I can't think of a complaint about it. Um, no. It was a great movie. A couple of the cuts were a little weird, you know, so that, like... Yeah, but, uh, I mean, he was still kind of a novice director at that point. That was still pretty early in his career. Um, well, I also think it was a lot that had to do with budget. I really think... Is that, that, too. A lot of it's like, okay, let's just get here. We don't need to give the extra exposition <laughs> in this scene. Right. We'll move on. And we got to think of the time period, too. I mean, the time period in the 80s, there weren't nearly people really known for making really good tra scene transitions. Well, that's because you were cutting with scissors. Right. And, you know, you weren't. they weren't doing a lot of fades. I mean, the only people that were really doing any fades or anything like that were, like, THX and Lucas and yeah, you know, those the big, guys. Yeah, more larger budget right. studios. But, you know, the, the smaller guys weren't weren't doing any of that. They were just doing cuts. I mean, so, these guys uh, were falling through real glass. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which, you know, makes them pretty hardcore. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, there's really, the movie is spectacular. I mean, it's a great film. Um, yeah, it, intense crime drama, but with a, the, the moral message still holds. Kind of like, um, it, it has tinges of the feeling of, like, an Infernal Affairs, which was later The Departed. Mm -hmm. um, but it just feels more intense. And, don't watch the Korean remake. It's, uh, I don't know. I thought it was awful. Hmm. It, it lacked all the all the heart and soul that this had to me. It, it really feels. This feels like a movie where everybody involved kind of had a passion for it. Yeah, no. It it's really it is an excellent story. I mean, it's a great movie. And then there was the second one. And then there was the second one. So, I I mean I know John Woo did not want to do the second one at all. And one of his arguments was, you know, oh, the character's dead. You're like, ah, you can bring him back. So, for whatever reason, <laughs> Hark put enough pressure on him, I'm guessing in the form of money. Yeah, monetary pressure. And yeah. he, so he made the second one. Now, the, the, the fight scenes in this are actually better done. Pretty good. More, more choreographed and absolutely brilliant. And the, the actual, um, one of the things I noticed about not only the chore choreography about that, but the, um, a lot of the film cuts and a lot of the angles and stuff that he used for, like, the gunfights and stuff were, like, much more, um, mature. Right, leading one. up to what you would see in The Killer. Yeah, exactly. And that yeah, kind of thing. I think he had kind of found his groove a little bit and kind of, like, got the hang of doing these gun scenes a little bit more, like... He was really good about doing angles about, like, somebody coming out of the door, and then he'd, like, have, like, a high-angle lens to, like, shoot, you know, a guy, like, shooting him with, uh, as he comes out of the door. Very well done, and it was very easy to track what was going on in all of the action scenes, which is actually a very difficult thing to do in a lot of action movies, and a lot of things, uh, directors can't do it correctly. Like in Street um, Fighter. Like in Street Fighter. <laughs> um, like we just talked about. But the, um, but in this one, I mean, you could, in the action scenes, you could always tell what was going on. Which, you know, that's that's excellent. When you're now, killing 100 plus people. That's which is really impressive, right. I mean, you can always keep track of who was who, who and who, especially when they're all dressed the same. And you can still keep track of who was who, who was the hero, who was doing what. And it was great. Um, now, if only he could keep track of the plot as well as he kept track of the gun scenes. Yeah, so, I mean, you can say, he's, only, he's never seen the movie before. No. But I have. And even when I was watching it, there's a couple points where the story... 
It, like I feel like there was meandered. something missing. Like there, I'm missing something. Like we, right. how did we get here? Yeah. And, and like, like um, when uh, Lung, Lung knows that his, I think he knows his daughter's dead. Right. But Kent or Ken knows his daughter's dead, so we can never figure out when. Lung loses his mind after the little girl dies. I'm assuming he had. That's why he had his mental breakdown. Yeah, but we at the time of that, he thought that I think he thought that his daughter was still alive because that was the whole conversation on the phone. Because they called him and lied to him. He right. said, "Yeah, oh no, she's fine." And then he has a mental breakdown, and Ken tells him that his daughter's dead, and it doesn't seem to bother him. And we're not sure if that's a reveal. And then they play with oranges, and I. That, that whole, whole section was could have really been just cut. Like honestly, you could have had like a couple of montage like scenes. Just shoot some more people, really. Yeah, that would have been <laughs> fine too. Um, but like, I mean, you could have just done a really quick montage showing some passage to like show him getting eventually better. Right, could have been done. For, for from a narrative perspective, I really feel this is close to, if not one of Wu's weakest films. I mean. You know, he has other, from strictly yeah. strictly a narrative perspective, because usually, I mean, he, even if you're not a fan of the goofiness of Face Off, the narrative was, it flowed. You know what was going Still on. Still knew what was going on. It, it, whereas this, I was really confused. For like the whole first half of the movie. Yeah. yeah I'm just not sure what's happening here. And I'm like, okay, I know we want to get to the house scene because that part's awesome. And it was still awesome. That right. was still a great scene. Uh, that is the scene in the background of True Romance. Uh, when he's eating the pizza and she comes home, that's the movie he's watching, which is Better Tomorrow too. Um, and the, the, again, the fight the scenes are still fantastic. If you're a you know if you're a fan of Rodriguez or uh, Tarantino, obviously watching these films, you can really see oh, yeah. the influence how they pulled that in. Um, I, I mean, these are a, a decade prior to either of them, you know, breaking through. I mean, obviously they were watching them, and Tarantino freely admits he was watching mm -hmm. a lot of the Hong Kong cinema at the video store. But, like, a lot of the angles and the stuff and the shots that they were using are, like, identical. They're, like, identical right. shots. And because it has a lot of more kinetic energy yes. to a, an action sequence yes. a, instead of your your typical studio action film you're getting. Right. Very much, and, and Wu borrows a lot from what Peck and Paul was doing in, in, right. in his stuff. Um, not just the slow mo, but the way, the kind of the intensity uh, of the way he would shoot his stuff, as well as you know bits from Leone. So <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of cool just to see in a different perspective. You know, they it's a, a Chinese director taking ideas from Western directors with his own interpretation. I think that's what always made Wu very interesting and unique as a Chinese filmmaker. Even is he was able to mold those American ideas into a Chinese concept. Um, you know, and, and he's since he's gone on without Hark, who kind of did a lot of the same thing too, but in a different way, you know, Wu's kind of found his own groove and came over to the States and did his stuff here right. and managed to make some successful U.S. movies as well. Uh, now he's back in China and doing his other stuff with... Uh, and his, his new one is just... Part one just came out. It looks pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, that that's a babbling about woo there um yeah i don't know anything else to say about two uh no i mean it's uh i mean it's, it's a good movie it's good for um if you're ever willing to get into shooting action films it's a <laughs> good watch because it shows you how to do it correctly um he does an excellent job of doing that um i think it's but, actually better not to watch them back to back because it makes it not as good. It does, because it was really hard to not judge the second one against the first one. Yeah. And that's really not a fair comparison. It, it isn't, because, um, it, you know, it's very... Yeah, it, that's what I really felt that. I was like, right. it's just I mean, as doing, good of a story. And especially after, like, you know, you just watched, like, a really good character death in the first one, and then they're just like, and it means nothing, because here's his twin. <laughs> it's like... Uh, and, oh, and by the way, his twin is identical in every way, shape, or form. Right, and we watched like, the exact same character. Back. I mean, it's like, so that's, yeah, it was, that was, especially when he got the jacket. Yeah. He came to get the same like, shot-up oh. jacket, and then the glasses, and the, the match. He was chewing on them. Why? Wait, why would he do even that? Why in, is even inheriting a... his brother's, like, ticks. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It was, like, weird <laughs> habits. Like, it's, it, it felt to me like, honestly. This really wanted to bring yeah, him back from the dead. Wu wasn't taking this seriously. 
Chow Yun Fat didn't take it seriously. Right. And there's like, whatever. Yeah, it, it's. He came back from the dead, but that's too ridiculous. So it's just his twin brother who yeah. happens to also be like mafia gangster guy. Even though he's established to be running a Chinese restaurant. Why hey, is he? Baby. But yet he's a cold blooded killer, apparently. Hey, and, baby. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But it, all in all, yes, it's still a good movie. action movie. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, I, you know, I'll check out three again. Uh, at one point, I'll, I'll make you suffer through that. Um, <laughs> but I, because I've only seen three once, and I remember not liking it very much, but who knows? When you yeah. don't watch something for a long time, you go back. Great flicks. Um, so make sure you check out at least the first one, for sure. I, I know it's on Netflix, but of course, if you can, get the Chinese version, because they act better in Chinese than weird, crappy dubbing. Yes. Um, all right, let us know anything else you want to see, and we'll see you here next time at Movie Mayhem.